Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Pet Project Fundamentals with the Italians. Uh, today we are going to do something very quick. We are going to start from our usual Hello Spike example and we are going to add the two tools that I always add to any pro or project when I start. And that's Timber because we need to log. Uh, I add Crashlytics because, well, <laughs> I mean, shit happens. So you need to be able to track down crashes and we are going to wire the two of them to have also remote logging for known fatals. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is add Timber. And the way I do it, I just search for it. So Timber, Android, and we get something. Jack Wharton, yay. So we go here, scrolly, 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 how we add it, blah, blah, blah. We copy, we go back, let's get here. In the meantime, how do we use this? So there is a bit of documentation here. There is an example app, Java. Uh, so this is the bit that we, we want. So, and I already have it here in the Spike uh, application. Uh, so we can start from here. The thing that I didn't remember to do is to actually add this to the manifest. Uh, pretty sure that this is not here. So how do we do it? So boom, okay. Pretty straightforward. We add it and we are done. So the, the manifest is ready now. Um, what do we do with timber? So we need to initialize timber planting a debug tree. So we can do this right away. And uh, yes, thank you. Close enough. Uh, timber, where is it? Timber dot plant debug tree import import. Looks good. So uh, let's try to run the app. Shouldn't do anything, but let's see. Yeah, here you go. So how we log something? Let's go here. So this is our main screen. It's very not much. Just let, let's let's log something here. How do we log it? Timber dot D and we do ciao. Okay. We run the app. Do we have something in Logcat? Yeah, here you go. So we have ciao. So this is done. This is the basic, the minimum basic input. This thing is very colorful. Um, this is the basic, the basic implementation of Timber. We just installed the thing at the library, uh, initialize the, the plan and, and we start logging. Okay. There's no much, uh, to that. The thing that we want to try to avoid is actually to log in production. So the suggestion that we also had in the, um, example is have something like this, right? So what, do, what what's this? Basically, this is an if else. We check if the the config is debuggable. We do something or we do something else in uh, production. So for now, we just do something like this. So if build uh, build config dot debug do something. Otherwise, we do something else that we don't know yet. Okay, so this is going to prevent us from logging in uh, production that if we want to do something a bit fancier, we can start uh, looking at Crashlytics implementation and uh, try to connect uh, Timber and Crashlytics. So how do we do it? So first of all, well, let's go to Firebase add a new project. What's the project name? Uh, well, let's go for hello spike. Hello spike. Um, yep. Blah, blah, blah. Well, why not? Analytics is good. Select an account. Uh, code with Italians. Create a project. Yay. Project is ready. Boom. So this is our new project. Hello spike. Uh, we go to Crashlytics. How do I get started? Uh, add to project. So app name, uh, copy paste. Hello, Spike. Okay, let's do register the app. 
Uh, let's download the Google service JSON and it's here and we need to place it in the app folder. Now let's let's see what next. What do we need to do? Uh, more stuff. Let's add stuff to the Gradle file. So we can add this, this like this, uh, dependencies. Okay. Okay. So, and or project Google, do we have the Google thing? I think it's here, right? Okay. So it's, it's already here. It should be already. Okay. Let's try to sync. Um, what do we have now? So we have stuff to do in the app module, um, build Gradle files. So we need to add the plugin. Let's Okay, so if I do sync now, it's gonna explode. Oh, okay, so far so good, good. Um, what do we have? So we have the bomb for Firebase. Let's go here. And then we have actually Firebase Analytics. Okay, looks good. And uh, I think that it's okay for now. So now we need to add Crashlytics itself. Okay, so we have the bomb already. We have analytics already and we need to add Crashlytics. Looks good. Okay, so more stuff to add to the root. This is the root Gradle file where we added the services. So it's this file here. Let's add this. Uh, we already have the repositories. We also have a plugin. So we we'll do the same thing that we did before. So we go to the app module plugin uh, Gradle file and we add this here. Okay. And do alt enter, sync now. Okay. Done. That was good. So force a crash to finish setup. How do we crash the app? I think we can do something like this or even like a to do so yeah okay so if we run the app now the app should let's see oh here you go something happened app detected we are waiting for a crash well, let's crash let's crash again so here we go, something, something, error, crashy, run the app, the app crashed, legitimately, it's it, us, yep, clean it, remove it, run it again, okay, hello spike, here you go, okay, first try, so, this is good. So now we have a working implementation of Crashlytics. We also fixed shit along the way because that's what we do. So why Timber and Crashlytics? What I mean with that? So we can use uh, Crashlytics for two things. Crashes, uh, but you can also do known fatals. Okay, so you can connect Crashlytics and use it as a remote logging mechanism for uh, things that didn't crash your app but like exceptions that uh, happened but they didn't crash the app you manage the the exception but you also would like to know that they happened so how do we do it we can create a crash reporting tree similar to this one and and use it um, so what, what are we doing here? So we are creating a timber tree and we are overriding the log um, method, the log method, and we are plugging Crashlytics. And what are we doing? We are logging the message. And if it's an error, we are actually recording the exception in Crashlytics. This is the bare minimum. And how do we use it? Well, we need to replace this with timber e well plant and uh, new how was it crash reporting tree is the thing that we need to to plug so 
let's let's try to do this. Uh, let's let's say we have a try catch, and uh, we can crash with an error. Uh, catch me, okay? Let's see if it works. Catch me, and if we catch the thing. we do something. So we um, handle the crash, but we also want to uh, we also want to log the, the crash itself. So this is how you will do it. And the beauty of this approach is that the same command acts differently in two environments. So if I run this in a debug build, the app tried to crash, we called it, and we handled the crash, kinda, uh, and we tracked it. Okay, now we, we tracked it locally, so we printed it locally, but with this approach here, when we push the app to the Play Store, the app is gonna not be debug, right? It's gonna be production release build. So the crash reporting tree is actually gonna kick in. So instead of logging or log cut that, you know, we don't need that on user's device, it's going to log to crash analytics. On the console, you will see a non-fatal issue appearing here. It's not going to be an, a crash, it's going to be a non-fatal, and it's going to be a way to track, you know, if the exception uh, happened and how many occurrences you have. So one last bit that I want to try to add is a bit of um, um, improvement on how we start the, the whole timber thing. And I usually do it with something like this, uh, like um, a, an object that um, starts the whole timber situation. So I don't do this here in the app, but you can do something like crash, and log and set up timber, right? So this is a bit nicer. Let's look at what we do here. So we do the same if else. We do the um, else with the production environment the, in the debug environment. The debug environment, we do this weird thing here. So the the debug tree, it's, it's custom. We usually were using the default debug tree. Now we are using this one. So this one um, is actually giving you more information about where the crash is happening. Theoretically, it should tell you the file name, the line number, and the method where it crashed. This is very useful for me because on debug builds, now you have a very, very, very precise way of logging it. You know, it gives you a lot of information. If you are uh, like me, that you don't debug a lot with debugger and things and breakpoints, but you, you're more like a print line kind of debugger developer. Uh, this kind of stuff is super useful. So this is it. Now you can log things. Uh, you can log things remotely with Timber plus Crash Analytics. We have crash reporting and we also have a, a bonus with the line number and the method for uh, for the debug uh, crashes. So this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, if you like the video, please subscribe, like, and uh, keep supporting and uh, enjoying Code with Italians material. Thank you again. Have a nice evening.